Question number three, again submitted by Dr. Imjad Hussain, uh, one of my trainee in the mini fellowship in movement disorder, a wonderful guy. Is there a reason to delay levodopa treatment in Parkinson's disease? I think this is the most common question asked. There will be, the main reason might be if you, uh, if you don't want to use levodopa early in Parkinson's disease, would be that patients will do worse in the long run if they were taking levodopa early on and they will do better in the long run if they were not taking levodopa early on, right? Uh, and that could be for two reasons. One reason could be that levodopa itself is toxic to the brain and worsens Parkinson's over time if they take it as compared to if they were not taking it. The other reason would be that there is something else going on at the same time because of their taking levodopa and that's why they have poor outcome, not that the levodopa was toxic by itself. The this brief answer is no. There is no reason not to take levodopa early in Parkinson's disease. And let me try to explain the known evidence or support or, or my reasoning for it. So question number one, or uh, re point number one, that is levodopa directly toxic to the brain cells has been answered I think quite satisfactorily by the L-DOPA study, E-L-L-D-O-P-A, L-DOPA study in 2005, that was the second uh, placebo control levodopa trial ever done. So first one was by Hohn and Yar, I think was levodopa alone, without any carbidopa before Cinemet, 1964, that when the Hohn and Yar staging was published. And then, since then, it was just being used. There was no placebo control trial. And in 2005, the trial was designed to answer this question, is taking levodopa toxic to the brain? And they divide patients into four groups, one taking nothing, one taking small amount of levodopa, then moderate, and then high dose of levodopa early on. These were all newly diagnosed Parkinson's patients, never been treated before. So the de novo patient. And after taking the medication for six months, they had them stop the drugs, all of them, placebo and three doses of cinnamon, wait for 14 days for the drug to completely go out of the system and then they were assessed and they were measured compared to the baseline and six months to see how the symptoms have progressed. So clearly when they started medication, the symptoms got better, then they slowly started getting worse based on the trials and the question was that eventually is the levodopa patient much worse than baseline as compared to the one who were not taking medication or placebo and what we found out that the patients on levodopa did much better than placebo in terms of worsening over time of six months, even after stopping the medication for two weeks. And it was dose dependent. The more levodopa the patient took, the better they were two weeks after stopping the drug at a six months interval. So they had progressed, but much less than the ones who were not taking the medication. And the more you took, the less you progressed. That actually showed that levodopa is neuroprotective, if anything, it's opposite. If you take levodopa, you don't progress as much as you don't take levodopa. The biggest question is that was two weeks of not taking levodopa enough to reverse all the changes that levodopa makes in the brain? And so it's just a symptomatic improvement, but the disease is actually not slowed down. That's a diff difficult question, a complicated question. The, the one trial I mentioned in the answer to question number two on the deep brain stimulation surgery and its benefit, it had a washout or stopping of the stimulation for one week only. And was that enough? Are there long-term changes that happen in the brain when you take medication or stimulation that doesn't go away in one week or two weeks, maybe one month, maybe six weeks, maybe six months again? that you just keep following them for another six months because they were on treatment for six months, now they're off treatment for six months before you say that they ever catch up. You know, are they all about equal worse or leave it open one more worse or things like that. Very difficult design to do, right? Who will do that study? But bottom line is that levodopa so far is, doesn't appear to be toxic in the best design study. You know, maybe it's still protective, maybe not, but it's not toxic. So the second question is that, will taking levodopa early on create other issues without directly causing damage to the cells in the brain that may suggest that, okay, maybe they would have been better off without taking levodopa early on as much. Uh, maybe. So there are two things that can happen. One thing is that if they take levodopa, as their disease progress, they will start having less smooth of a response with levodopa. What is called motor fluctuation. So they become too restless when they take medication and they become off without their taking medication. So when you start taking levodopa, you have a great response. The whole day is smooth, wonderful. 
you can miss a dose, you can miss a day, no, and nothing's different. But with time, you take levodopa, it kicks in, you can tell it kicks in, you're restless and you're moving all over the place, and then it starts wearing off after four hours, six hours. That motor fluctuation clearly starts occurring sooner or is more is noticeable sooner the more levodopa you take and occurs later the less levodopa you take now is it that the more levodopa amplifies that natural disease progression phenomena more so than the lower amount and is not a toxicity we know levodopa is not toxic but there is something changing in the brain which is now either amplified or somehow brought on sooner because of higher amount of levodopa as compared to lower amount so the lowest amount of levodopa will be zero right so if you take zero the motor fluctuation would never happen but what's the flip side the flip side is that if you're not taking levodopa you have less energy less motivation than you would have otherwise you have less dexterity more stiff and rigid that means that you're not as active the best activity are exercises and we just talked in the first question that more exercise or second question, the more exercises you do, you uh, have less complication in the long run with falls and balance problem. So actually levodopa taking is useful because now it will let you be more active and be, do more exercise and continue to stay active, continue to, to work if you're working. So if, you, if you're not taking levodopa, you're, you're depriving yourself of that opportunity to have more motivation, more energy and, and doing more things. Is that bad? Well, it is bad if you decide to retire. If I was working and my Parkinson's symptoms came on and I was bothered by them and was not able to work and I decided to retire, I could have delayed the retirement by taking levodopa and continue to work and be productive and achieve you know, what I wanted in my career. We know levodopa is useful for depression. You know, patients with severe depression, if they don't have dopamine, if you give them dopamine, they have less depression. Would my mood have been better? Would I have decided not to retire because I had more levodopa? regardless of my physical capacity limitation. Now I have a mental limitation because I, you know, I don't have that energy anymore. And levodopa gives you that energy. So yeah, there is, I mean, there's both sides to it. So should you take levodopa early on? Should you not take levodopa early on? Is there any advantage? Yeah, the advantage is that if you take less of it, you can have more complications later. If you take more of it, you can exercise more, right? you have more motivation and energy, you keep working more, you have more projects get done. So maybe there is a happy medium, you know, there is no good answer. Again, I have said before, when to start levodopa or when to start medication? Well, when the patient has symptoms that are bothersome. Who decides that? Patient decides that with input from their caregiver, with input from their friends, with input from you. And he takes all that input or she takes all that input and put it together and decide, okay, for me, it's time to take levodopa or Parkinson medications.